Rebecca Osei Badu. Rebecca is a fashion buyer, women's wear. She started her career in Selfridges and she stayed there for about five years. Then she moved on to Browns where she was the fashion buyer for six years. And she's currently the head fashion buyer for women's wear in Sum, Russia. So, without further ado, let's introduce Rebecca Osei Badu. Hi, Rebecca. <laughs> Hi everybody, thank you for having me. Are you guys excited to see Rebecca? Thank you. Yay. <laughs> okay, so I'm Rebecca, I'm sure everyone wants to know, how did you get into fashion buying? Was it a hobby, a passion, or did you go to school for it? Um, well, I didn't go to school for it. I actually studied um, international business, and I was doing a lot of internships in fashion companies because I knew I wanted to do fashion. I just didn't know exactly what field, Ooh, sorry. Um, I didn't know if it was in marketing, in uh, press, in styling, in... I, I really didn't, I didn't have a clue. So I did all these internships and I was also, at the same time as doing my studies, I was working on the weekends at Selfridges and I was just, you know, selling on the shop floor. As I was doing that, um, I really, I, you know, working in the press offices, doing the internships was fun and everything, but I just, I couldn't see myself doing that in the long term. So what I really enjoyed was selling to customers and having good relationships with those customers and really having a passion for the product. That's what really got me going. And then towards the end, um, I by chance met the buyers uh, on a weekday because I was doing some overtime that time because I used to only work on the weekends. And during that week when I met them, I said, you know, I love working here, but what I'd really like to do is um, what you guys do, the buying and the selection. And so they said, well, you know, we think you'd be really good at it because you have a really good understanding of how to sell the clothes and what the customers want. So why don't you apply for the job? There's an admin job going. You feel free to apply. And if you get through, then you'll be on our team. So that's exactly what I did. And I applied for the admin job, which is, you know, a real entry level job in buying. And, um, and then the rest is history, as, I, as they say. And I've been a bias. Well, I've worked my way up from that day and here I am. So like if I want to be a buyer today, yeah, um, or if anyone here wants to be a buyer, mm -hmm. what do you think is key? Like, what, what advice do you have? Well, I think you have to be, first of all, into fashion. You have to be passionate. You have to know, know about the industry. You, know, you, you have to know your stuff just like with any industry that you're in or any field that you want to go into. You should know your stuff. And when I say know your stuff, I mean, know about fashion, know about what, what's current, know about the popular culture, know about exhibitions, know a bit about art, just know a bit about everything because fashion at the end of the day is a accumulation of all those things. Um, it's just really important to be aware because the more aware you are, the more, you know, the, the better it is for your customer because you'll always be able to bring them something new and something that they probably wouldn't expect because you're, you're aware of what's happening, of your surroundings. So you started as an admin, yes. but you've worked your way all the way to be head by of Zoom. So how is it like going through the ladder? Uh, well, you know, I was really happy to start at the, at, the, at the bottom, as they say, as being the admin, because it would allow me to have a clear understanding of how everything works. So, and I think that that's really important, you know, now as a buyer I can appreciate every every step I've been through and it gives you a wider understanding of the whole business itself um, but you know being an admin is yeah it's the entry-level job but it's one of the most important jobs because you have to you basically run that department for the buyers so you need to be really on top of everything you need to know what deliveries are coming in from which brands when they're coming in you need to know if there's a problem on the shop floor with a particular piece if something's faulty you just it and it's very um it's a lot of paperwork it's it's not glamorous at all you barely see the buyers because they're traveling they're either in paris in milan in new york but if they have a problem you're the one that has to answer the problem you know they'll come to you because you're the point of um you're their, their point of uh, call, if that oh, makes sense. Yeah. Point so of call. it's a very entry level, sorry, I can't use this mic. Okay, it's a um, very entry level job, but it's one of the most important. And I think it's, if anybody wants to get into buying, I would encourage you to start from the bottom and then work your way up. Yeah. 
So I know a few things about Rebecca. Um, while she was in Browns, she helped some of the smaller brands get to be a bit bigger. So some unknown brands were unknown in certain circles, and then we started seeing them on the streets. Um, so what do you, what's one of your career highlights? Um, I think they've, there have been many career highlights. Um, I think the most important for me is always you know, working with designers and building businesses with them and growing their businesses. And then also, you know, seeing customers come into the store and buying into that brand that was probably unknown or that not many people believed in. And then, you know, just building a business because at the end of the day, it is a business. You want to make money from the brands that you're buying and that you're choosing for the store. Um, yeah, you know, you take risks and those risks pay off. It's 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 a it's like in any business, but it's that's probably the highlight for me is just making money for the store that I'm working for, obviously, and uh, making money from those brands and um, growing the business with those designers. Um, another career highlight would probably be um, I don't know having Drake launch his collection with uh, Brown's Focus when he launched his OVO collection. That was really cool, but that's a highlight for me personally because I'm a fan. And it was really nice to see people queue up from the day before at 11 p.m. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> people queued up at 11 p.m. the night before to, um, to, you know, to get a chance to meet him and to buy the clothes. And we sold out of every single piece. Yeah, we had so, Drake fans. Yeah, yeah. like Drake. <laughs> so that was a highlight. But honestly, the highlight is building businesses with these brands and having a partnership because it is a partnership. You know, you buy them because you think that they can offer something to the customer that you cater to and they're doing something special and something different and it's a partnership and you want you want it to grow so as a fashion buyer how do you know what's commercial and what isn't like i know you have designers have their own outlook yeah. on what they want to do so how can you differentiate with seeing different brands and saying okay i think this will sell this won't do as well uh well, that, that really depends on, um, on the brand that you're seeing and who your customer is because you're always buying for your customer, whoever that woman, I, I do women's mayor, so I'll talk about the woman, um, whoever that woman is, um, you need to, you know, designers, they can be as creative as they want and it, obviously they're designers, so they're always going to be creative, but it's important to be commercial. You have to have um, commerciality because at the end of the day, customers want to be able to wear your clothes. Um, and you know, when I say commercial, I mean it needs to it needs to have a, a good price point is always key, um, and it has to be easy to understand, and it has to have a clear message, and it has to be really identifiable. Like the customer needs to know, oh yeah, that's X designer. I, I've seen them before. That's what they do. That's their thing. That's their trick. Trademark isn't the right word, but that's yeah. their signature, as it so were. So, like, um, does your personal taste influence what you buy? Like, if in case you're into colors, maybe you just get attracted to really bright stuff. Uh, no, my personal taste doesn't really come into it when I'm buying because I'm buying for that customer that is coming into the store. So I'm always buying for her first and foremost. Obviously, there are brands that I like, so. I personally like them and I personally buy them for them for myself for myself sorry but if you're a, a good buyer you should be able to buy for you should be able to buy any brand and for any customer it shouldn't it shouldn't be about you it's yeah, al always about that customer because that customer is the one who's going to be putting her hand in her pocket to buy the pieces that you have in your store so I know like you're now currently in some Russia but um, yeah. after spending about 10 11 years being a fashion buyer between Selfridges and Brown, yeah. how has it been like transitioning from such a hub London is to Moscow? Uh, well, Moscow, so I've been at Tsum. Mos Tsum is um, the equivalent of, I would say, Selfridges or Harrods in Moscow. It's like a very iconic um, department store. And it actually just celebrated 110 years two weeks ago. Um, it's a beautiful store. It's, it's literally, it could be in London, it would be exactly the same thing. However, their customer is, I would, she's different. I mean, they've got different tastes. You know, it's buying for a different market. So there's always little things that, that change. For example, um, you know, the Russians really like nudes and greys, and that's not usually colors that I would buy for 
the UK market because it's not a particularly flattering color and we've seen in the past that it hasn't sold. So it's something I would steer clear, clear from. But in Russia, for example, they love it. And then also things like, you know, just knowing that customer, knowing what she likes to do, where she, you know, where she goes on holiday, what she does in her spare time, how she, how she lives, you know, what kind of money they have to spend. Um, all those little things are really important and they help you make the, the best selection when you're in the showroom choosing, choosing the clothes. Um, you know, for example, another example, in, in Russia it's always, 90% of the time it's cold, you know. In the summer it's hot, but it's really, really cold, cold yeah. a lot of the time. So, you know, when I'm, for example, in the, the Saint Laurent showroom buying the collection, I'm making sure that I've got a lot of knitwear on offer for that customer because I know that when it delivers, it will sell because it's a very buy now, wear now uh, product for the time that it ships. But for example, in London, I probably wouldn't have bought as many, as much knitwear as I would for Tsum because, you know, the winter starts a lot later in, in London and people don't necessarily buy knits and coats until after, like, uh, until December, January. Whereas in Russia, they start buying them very early. So it's just balancing how you do your, how you buy. Yeah, different markets. Different, for different yeah. markets, exactly. So I know you're not from this environment, but um, so we're all here in Lagos. So we yeah. just want to know, if I want to be a buyer here in Nigeria, what advice do you have for them? Um, for us? I would say you, well, you should be determined. And, you know, if you want to get into buying, then you have to also know that it's not, it's not all glamorous. Um, it, looks, it may look glamorous, but it really isn't. It's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of, you know, working super, super late, um, catching flights all the time, working the next day. It, it's, it's, very, it's quite stressful. Then there's doing the orders. And it's also, again, it's a business. So you need to be really good with numbers and you need to know what makes, what makes your, what, sorry, what is bringing in the money what you can buy more of, what you need more of, what you don't need. It's also about doing deals with designers. I say deals, I mean like... Bargains, good prices. Yep, yeah, making sure that you have that in the collection, but also, for example, if there's a brand that you're not so sure of, but you've, you want to take a risk, maybe asking for that brand on SOR, which means sale or return or consignment. Okay. And then there's also sell-through guarantees, where you guarantee the set, a sell-through guarantee basically is, should I explain that? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically guaranteeing the sell-through of 65%. When you buy a brand, uh, well, our target sell-through has always been 65%, which means that you have to sell up to 65% of the pieces that you've bought in order to make a profit. So it's, all, it's a lot of negotiating um, and it's, it's, it's a business and it's being good with numbers and also having a good eye having a clear vision and knowing who your customer is because at the end of the day you're buying for her and she is king queen king or queen okay so um how many people here own brands or are designers one one two okay three four. so um, i'm sure most people want to know well how do they get their brands or items in stores because i know yeah. um buyers are the one who gets those things into stores. So if I'm a designer, or for all the designers in the audience, yeah. if they want to break into the international market, how do they do it? Well, I think first of all, they need to know who their customer is. I keep going on about the customer, but it's really important because that's who makes or breaks your, your business. I would say you really know, need to know who your customer is. You need to have a clear message and you need to be really determined and you need to be able to take criticism because you know I, there's a lot of collections that I see and you know I'm honest um, I will say you know I think I don't think that that would work or I think you're not you're not ready you need to go back you know you need to maybe work on work on this side maybe not don't do this don't do that so you have to be able to take a lot of criticism from buyers and from people that you know you want feedback from but I would definitely say have a clear message and be consistent you know one season you've done this next season you can't be doing something completely different there has to be um, consistency. A consistency and a message because me as a buyer I came to you that first season because I really like 
I liked what I saw, you know, so I'm expecting for next season to be not exactly what I saw the previous season, but a, a move on that, you know, um, upgrade. an upgrade on that. Yeah. So, so, yeah, you have to be, there has to be a clear message and it has to be, it has to be obvious to everybody. You need to know who your customer is and you need to be commercial as well. I think those are the most yeah. important things. things. And that's what I look for when I look at a brand. It has to be something that I'm not getting from anybody else as well. I mean, in terms of other designers, I need to know that you, you know, you stand as, as you stand a, a, a part aside. So they must have like a uniqueness. Yeah, exactly. You have to be unique, and I have to be able to say, oh yeah, that's so and so. So if I, like, if I look at it first time, I should know. Okay, Rebecca made this. Yeah, if yeah, I was yeah, a designer, okay. I yeah. use your name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It needs okay. to be clear. Yeah. Okay. So um. We're done talking to ourselves. <laughs> so if anyone has any questions for Rebecca, we have like people roaming around with microphones. So if anyone has any question. This is our own profession because I've been trying to relate all what she's doing and what she stands for, for what we are doing here in Africa, especially in Nigeria. I think we don't send people to buy for us at this stage. It's about some limited people who have this money to fly around. If you ask me, we still go to the market by ourselves. We enter stores by ourselves. So I think I'm yet to see that connection because this is Nigeria. Yeah. This is not over there. I'm a designer. I know what I'm talking about. People still like to pick things for themselves so that's what we're trying to understand it's not that she's not making sense i can pick what she's saying but really i can only relate that to a celebrity somebody just wants someone to do stuff for them that's my own opinion now now what i'm saying is you buy for stores i know it is very clear but what i'm trying to say is from my own understanding how many stores do we have like that there here that will look for someone to shop and buy for my stores. If I'm correct, we are just trying to make Nigerians buy from us here. Our people go out there to buy, and they put, you know, stock up their stores. So that's what I'm saying. I understand what you're doing. And I'm, I'm just trying to marry together. So I think it's a good idea. We want to know how it's going to work here for us because we are just learning to buy from ourselves within Nigeria. Following from what the lady said, it's, um, there are stores here in Nigeria, I believe, who have buyers and those buyers are mixing international brands with home brands. And what I got from what Rebecca said was you can, her job, even though it's based abroad, in the Nigerian context, it's selling to a customer. And that customer is a person. So whether that customer is abroad or here, it's gaining the understanding of how you sell a product to a person. So that's how I understood it. So I guess the question is, how do you do that in a Nigerian context? So then I would, I would, what I would say as a buyer would be, you need to know who your customer is and who you want to cater for. So, and you need to know if your customer is somebody that wants to come to you for evening wear, for example, or if she wants to come to you for more day wear. And really, it's to make that clear in your mind who the end customer is, and then buy according to who that customer is, to make sure that they're going to come to you every, every week or whenever you have a delivery, because they know that you have what, you, what they want to buy. Does that make, does that make sense? Thank okay. you. Okay, we have some people at the back. All right, hello, Rebecca, and thanks for the opportunity. Firstly, uh, from all you said, I've been able to gather that you came, you came from somewhere to this point now. You didn't all start getting big uh, brands for big buyers. And you mentioned commercial. Uh, we are here because we want to learn that part of commercial. 
and it's, it's quite important in our own markets. We understand that you shop for international, from international brands. Now, we are gearing towards international, international branding. Now, that word commercial, I want to understand it in the context that you came from to this point. What you did and what you did not do, what you avoided, the mistakes you made. I want to know that word commercial and how it applies to me now. Thanks. So, commercial, I can't see you anymore. Commerciality is obviously super, super important and everything needs to be commercial for it to sell. Um, so, I can give you examples of what you want to know what commercial means. So, for example, if you have a really, you know, a, a beautiful piece that you've made as a designer, but it's probably not practical to, to go out on the street wearing that particular piece because it's, I don't know, the fabrics that you've used or the, the shape, etc. then you, you would have basically in your collection a commercial piece of that piece, which is like a, wa not watered down, watered down is probably not the right um, expression, but a simplified version of that piece which is more commercial and obviously is at a better price so that customers can buy into that, what, that beautiful piece that you made, but they can have it, you know, so it's easier to wear, therefore it's more commercial and the price is better, also more commercial. Does that answer your question? <laughs> Hello, Rebecca. Um, I'm a designer as well. I study fashion and design in school. Um, what I want to know is basically where like I know buyers they have like trade fair and things they go for and then they saw our brands right so I want to know how many types of fair there are so that I can get my brand there so that they can be sorted out so if you can give me like a list of trade fairs like on the like um, seasonal trade fairs or things like that I can get involved in so I can actually push my work out yeah thank you thanks for the question so for me, when I buy the brands, I usually buy them, well, I mostly buy them in Paris and in Milan. And those are where, you know, Paris is probably the most important place for a designer to show because all the buyers will always be in that, in that city at that one particular time. And there are many trade shows that buyers go to, or trade fairs. Um, there's Première Class, there's Trenoy, there's uh, Women. Uh, those are the th Trinoy, I think, is probably not the number one because everybody definitely goes there. But um, you know, women, the women trade show is also is also important. But Trinoy was probably the number one, and every brand is rep nearly every brand is represented there. Okay, we have one here over there in the middle. Thank you, Rebecca. Um, I want to ask you a question where you talked about being consistent now and also trying to blend into the trending outfit. Now, for instance, I'm an African, I'm a Nigerian, and I deal with Af Nigerian wares. I want to break into the international market. How would it be possible for me to be able to put in my own product, my own brand, for instance, into the market? Thank you. So you want to know how to get into the market with your brand? Okay. So, I mean, how people contact me on a regular basis is via email, and it's by sending me their lookbook and a short email saying, hi, my name is blah, blah, XX. I'm this, this is my first brand, it's my first season. I'd really appreciate if you could have a look and give me your feedback. And then, you know, attached to the email is a lookbook or any images that you have showcasing your work. And, you know, those images are super important because that's what I will look at. And, as a, you know, you're really busy as a buyer, so you don't really have time to, to go through every email that you get. So those images are super important because they tell who, they tell me who you are immediately. So I think if you pick a few good images, I'm, I'm assuming you've, you've got your, okay. So, so you would send those images to the buyers and to, or to whoever, whichever stores you're trying to target, be it in Paris or here, it, it doesn't matter. It, I mean, it's the same kind of thing, whether you're in Nigeria or in Paris or in Milan or in London, just really sending an email with your, with your work and asking for a chance because at the end of the day that's that's how it works if you're not represented at a showroom or if you're not at a trade show then i would say that's probably the easiest easiest thing to do and i also would say um is that you should make sure if you have a social media that your instagram because a lot of buyers look at instagram now it's like it's a tool as well 
you know, we don't just rely on people sending us emails with the, with the pictures, but then when we do get those emails with the pictures, we also then refer to the Instagram. I mean, that's how I work. So I would want to look immediately at your Instagram to see, so I can get a sense of what your world is and what your vision is as a brand. And then I would write back to you. <laughs> As, I want to ask it this question. As a top fashion buyer, what are the things that you're still looking to see in the African brand, the Nigerian brand? What are the things that we need to do to put our brands up there in international markets? That's a very good question. Um, are you a designer yourself? No. You don't design or you do? You are a fashion designer. Okay. Well, for me, I'm always looking for something that's, you know, that's different and that appeals, appeals to me, but then I know would, I'd be able to sell it. And I know that there's somebody out there that would want to buy, that, buy into that. So I just think it's really about having a, a strong, the stronger the message, the better, I think. You know, it's, at the end of the day, fashion is very visual and it's what we see. You know, so for you to, for all, all brands, whether in Nigeria, whether anywhere around the world, I just think it's really about having a clear message and having a strong message throughout the collections that you, that you make and having really strong images because that's, it, we're, we're so like, we're so visual now. Everything is visual, you know, it, it's just, it's super important. So for me, that's, that's what I would say. I would say you just have to have a really clear and really really amazing, like clear and strong, strong is probably the best word, it's clear and strong um, image for your brand. And that will, you know, people will start talking about it. And that will generate press and then that will make people curious and people will eventually start buying into you. I'm not a designer, but I'm in fashion retail, so I interface with customers. You, s you mentioned that you don't let your personal style affect what you buy. I, I tend to do that a lot, so I would like to know how to you know, not do that again, because most times when customers walk in, I tend to recommend something that I would like to wear. Yeah. And um, how do you do that? How do you not buy the things you like and, and just buy general stuff for everybody? So, as a buyer, I can't, I can't let my personal taste come into it because I'm buying for, I'm not buying for myself really, I'm buying for the customer that's gonna walk through the door. So, you know, different brands have, the, sorry, different brands have specific things that customers go to them for. You know, Rick Owens, for example, is all black and it's, you know, very androgynous and you know that that customer that's coming in is gonna buy that because that's what she's, that's what she likes and that's what she buys. Um, from my point of view, like I have to just buy the brand the best way that I can, making sure that I have all those pieces that the customer instantly recognizes with that brand available to them when they come in the store. So it's really having the right mix of product within the collection, having the commercial pieces, having the carryovers, so the pieces that they produce every season that sell well every season, making sure those are all represented so that that customer is satisfied. Hello, Rebecca. During the course of the talk, I, when we asked for questions, some of us stood up and we were like, we don't really understand okay, what you've been saying how, and how it relates to us. So me, I, I design clothes as well, but sometimes friends and families, they call me and they're like, Tina, we have this event. We want you to help us sort clothes and all that. And sometimes they're not the clothes that I personally design but help them go to the market to pick these things. But from the talk today, I realized that, okay, what I actually do for them at that point is not fashion designing, but it's like buying. So from the talk she gave to us today, I've been able to like separate up that, okay, there's a profession outside fashion design that you help people to pick clothes and all that. So I think the questions they asked saying they, don't, they couldn't relate, what it actually means is that you don't have to design all the time. You can actually help people buy their clothes. Maybe people who are very busy, who have very busy schedules and they cannot, they are not able to go and get stuff for themselves. You can actually pick it as a career. Really, I, when she was talking, I realized that, okay, henceforth, if any of my friends, my customers call me and 
I should help them get clothes that I was not the one that designed. I'll start charging them because I'll tell them I'm a fashion buyer okay. right now. Yes. So that was what I really wanted to claim. Thank you. Hello, Rebecca. Um, basically, my, from my understanding, I feel like we can all relate to what she has been saying because she calls it personal shopping. We call it um, being a businessman and being a businesswoman here in Nigeria. You definitely, okay, you don't have to buy for just an individual. Like, okay, a businessman, when he travels, he wants to appeal to a particular audience or to a particular group of people. Like someone that buys George, buys and sells George. You know the kind of people you want to appeal to. You know the kind of market you want to appeal to. So you know, the, okay, this is the kind of people I want to sell to. That's literally the same thing as what she does. So I think I, as um, a Nigerian designer, I can relate to what she says because I personally, I um, mass produce for the general public what they like. I want to know how they feel. I want to like, be in their emotions when I make my dresses. And that's what I understand from what okay, she let said. Let me take one more. One more from the back. One more from the back. Hi. Hi, Rebecca. Um, I just wanted to know how many pieces like you expect a fashion designer to make. Like, what's the minimum you would buy from a fashion, like each piece, and then um, you'd be expected for us to make for you to sell to a store, or because you know, like the mass market, it's a bit, it's hard here. So, like, what would be the minimum for like each piece? So I would say there isn't really a minimum. It really depends on the, the budget that you have and how big your collection is. I mean, to have a good collection, it doesn't mean you have to have, you know, t uh, 40 pieces. You could have a collection with only 20, and those 20 pieces are great. And when somebody comes in and makes a selection, they'll buy out of those 20 what they think that they can sell. But obviously, you know, they'll buy X piece, X piece, X piece, and they'll ask you to do three of that piece, two of this piece, and four of those pieces. It just depends on how, what they think that they can sell to their customer. And, you know, price comes into it. There's loads of different factors, and when it's going to deliver, things like that. So there isn't really, there's no, never a minimum, or a buyer never says, I want, you know, 10, 30 of this, 50 of that. I mean, they could, depending on the price and depending on what the product is. It really, it just depends, and also depending on their budget, and depending on whether they had a good season with you, if they bought you before, or if this is their first season with you, you know, it's all about figuring, figuring those things out, and those factors all come into it. Okay, thank you very much. We're so sorry, we're out of time, so we have to leave now. So thank you. All right, bye.